Martin. Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, speaking of explosion, uh, Polkadot overtakes Bitcoin Cash in the first year of activity. We're going to take a look at what exactly went on uh, in the last uh, 48 to 72 hours to cause Polkadot to hit that number five spot. Polkadot's awesome. And what the heck, why did it just blow up uh, almost by 100%? Well, just as a recap, after less than a year of activity, because Polkadot didn't come out more than, what, six, eight months ago? It's become the sixth largest crypto by market cap. And despite, and this is what the article says, despite the frequent comparisons to the number two blockchain, they're talking about Ethereum, Polkadot is not a, an Ethereum killer. It's a complement to Ethereum. It improves its scalability in an ecosystem that allows for asset transfer across other blockchains. So it's all about interoperability. And that's one of the things with, with uh, Ethereum, there's kind of a slowdown type of issue there. Well, they can start to use uh, Polkadot and it can increase everything. So I think this is like a win-win for everybody. Why wouldn't you invest into Polkadot? I mean, not why would you? That's what I do. I can't give you advice. It's an ecosystem that allows for asset transfer across blockchains. Products interoperability efforts are focused around Ethereum, but there are plans to include all future platforms later. That'll be interesting especially with Cardano. The smart contract capability of Ethereum on Substrate, Polkadot ecosystem development platform is expected to roll out sometime in Q1 or Q2. Of 20. So it's coming up. That's all we know. Gavin, they're talking about Gavin Wood. He is the founder. He wrote that the coming year is important for the development of the protocol. The ecosystem will bring together all the individual features like parachains and lease them to the project developers looking to build apps and on other all these parachains. And parachains, it's kind of like sharding in essence, but it's a little bit different. And all it really does just speeds up everything as far as throughput and transaction speed. And that, I think, is one of those game changers. So uh, there's some smart people in Polkadot, and we'll see how it all works out. I have Polkadot. Actually, a video on, on how to stake it. You can check that out later. And then just to recap, just so you know who Dr. Wood is, he was a part of what I call the Ethereum Mafia. And you can tell these guys, I mean, look, these are the guys that built Ethereum. Vitalik, Mai, Anthony, Amir, Charles, Wood, Jeffrey, and Joseph Lubin. I mean, these guys have already done it once as far as make a multi-billion dollar company. I will bet on all of them again because they've already been there and done that. And experience is a hell of a teacher. So uh, that's why I invested into, really, because of Wood, is why I invested in Polkadot. Charles, the same reason for Cardano. And it's also the reason why we actually have our Cardano staking pool. I mean, in less than a month, we're almost at 26% saturation uh, at 17 million. Once we hit 64 million, that's it. Or 63 million, that's it. You can't, we can't do anything else. So uh, it's filling up fast. That's all I can tell you. If you're looking to uh, get into the staking pool, there's a link underneath in the description. Just check that out and it'll show you exactly how to, to sign up. So again, these guys, I mean, I bet on them. And the reason, I mean, I put this together, this what I call the Ethereum Mafia. And I got this from the PayPal Mafia. You might know some of these people, uh, the guys who created uh, YouTube. Also, were part of the PayPal Mafia. LinkedIn, Tesla, Kevia, Slide, Yelp. Uh, who's this guy? Peter Thiel, a yeah, multi-billionaire. So, I mean, these guys have already done, I mean, amazing things. And they did it again. So that's why I invest in these people in the Ethereum Mafia. It only makes sense. And also, another reason why Polkadot really blew up uh, is because of this um, Binance listing. So the price started to really go up on December 23rd when Binance announced a 10 million fund to support projects on Polkadot. And they're not dumb over there in Binance. They know what's going to happen. They're like, oh, okay, well, people start building on Polkadot. So let's just give them some money so they can build even more on it. And then, you know, we'll look like geniuses. And then not only did they do that, but on December 28th, uh, people started to notice that the ETH Binance pair or, Beans, or, or Binance uh, USD stablecoin pair on Binance's homepage had been replaced by the DOT Binance USD pair, giving giving it just a little bit more exposure. So again, I mean, I know we talk about how there is the, uh, the Coinbase effect, but I think that's not as high as it used to be. I mean, definitely not. Now, when you start to see things that really move, you see it on Binance. And of course, I think the big one is the next coin that gets listed on PayPal. That one will go to the moon. All right, so that's what's going on there. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our last piece. So having said all that and talking about how great Polkadot is and how much I believe it and everything else, uh, my friends over there at uh, the Alex Maschioli Show and Trade the Chain, uh, they were talking about how Polkadot and the fundamentals and also the technical analysis looks like Polkadot could really run up 
and the word on the street was it could go to fifty to hundred dollars. And then CJ there on the left, uh, he talks about well maybe you know we'll just see because it, it'll probably flatten out then go up and this and that. So um, it was a it was a pretty good um, episode that they had over there, and I watched the whole thing and and uh, it was great. It's just that the thing is when you go through all these these articles and you see how great everything is, you're like whoa. I got to get into that. I get into that like now because it's going to blow up and it's just going to go crazy and it's just going to go to the moon. And at $50 for a dot, I mean, look, I've been in this game for since 2017, which some people are like, that's not that long. And that's true. It's not that long. It's only three years. Some people have been in since 2015 and some people have been in since 2011. So congratulations to you. But if you've been in any length of time, you start to realize some patterns. These patterns are FOMO. And it doesn't matter how long you get into it, even me. I mean, how long have I been harping on on, on this channel and, and talking to you and saying, hey, just dollar cost average. This morning, I was like, I got to get into polka dot. I got to get like, I got to start just dollar cost average out the window. Forget it. Let's just go balls to the wall. Let's, let's knock it out. And uh, then, of course, as things start to slow down, you start to realize that, hey, wait, what's going on with the price? So polka dot had a fantastic run, right? And it wasn't the number five spot. And now it's down to number six, and it's down 14% uh, in 24 hours. So yet again, it's one of those things. And how many times have you seen this where you're like, it's going to be great, it's going to be great, it's great, and then it falls. And you're like, whoa, well, that just, you know, puts a little, little cold water on everything. And you start to realize again that it's not about just going all in as, as fast as you can and FOMOing in because you never know. It's really just about taking a step back and going, okay, Am I going to use the, my, my rational thought and really get into these things? Or do I just want to like just throw it all you know in there and then just come back in, in like a decade and, and, and see what it does? I mean, look, if you pick the right one, uh, you could be up, uh, you know, huge amount, right? I mean, you could go um, nine years ago, eight years ago. I'm like, hey, you know, 10, here's, here's a thousand bucks into Bitcoin. And then you come back a decade later and I was like, you're rich. Or you could have done the same thing, like, here you go, color coin, and then where's all my money? It's gone. So I don't know which ones are going to make it. I don't. I can just tell you what I think are going to do really well, and this is the one I am doing. But I will. it's always about just coming down to just be an investor. The investors are the ones that really make a lot of the money. You can be a trader too. That's fine. Uh, just don't be a 100% trader. I, I mean, not even like... Uh, uh, Scott Melker, the the wolf of uh, all streets, he he says he's like the ones that make the most money are just the investors. He goes, I just like to trade, and it's it's true. It makes sense. And there's a different mindset between a trader and an investor, and you can do both. Uh, it's just that I just don't recommend for you to do at all that. Again, it's all what you want to do, not what I want to do. I'm just uh, I'm not a financial advice guy, but there is one image I want to share with you. This is a great image of summing up everything that we just talked about right now. It's all about investing. If you invested $1,000 10 years ago, and it really comes down to investing $1,000 into something that you know really appreciates. Well, Google really appreciated, and uh, you would have gotten 6 k Hey, you, you 6X, congratulations. Facebook, you would have 9X, great. Amazon, 22. Netflix, 34. Tesla, you would have been huge. At 159,000. Little trivia: uh, Tesla was not started by Elon Musk. There's a couple other guys, and he just came in and then just kind of took over the whole show. Crazy, right? Bitcoin, uh, you would have made 237 million. So this is all great news for cryptocurrency. But the question then becomes: Well, which ones are going to be the winners? There's not too many winners. If you go back 10 years ago and go, well, I could invest into into Yahoo. That might have been not a great idea. I could invest in the Blockbuster. That might not have been a great idea. I can invest in a lot of things. They would have all failed. There's very few ones that actually really make it. So you got to be careful about what you invest into because there's not a lot of Netflixes out there. There's not a lot of Teslas and there sure as heck ain't a lot of Bitcoin. So just be careful what you put in because, you know, as time goes on, there's only a few that can actually make it. All right, so that's it for this little snippet. Thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, there's going to be two more that's going to pop up on your left and right, and I'll let YouTube do its magic. I know today I said PayPal do its magic, so I was talking about PayPal. YouTube do its magic, and then just check out uh, whatever pops up. All right, so thanks for listening. Really appreciate it, and I'll see you on the next one.